Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, as be Joanna, but also um, as someone who is trying to navigate through the whole craziness in the Eastern and, and Central Europe. I mean, I would like to show up for you as much as I can. Yeah. Thank you. First of all, um, again, thank you for accepting this invitation. It was just an overnight crazy idea thinking that when 24th of February happened, I thought, what can I do as a psychologist? What can I do? What can I do? Where do I reach out for help? And I reach out for help to you. And I thought, mm. How about we invite Gavi to Poland for the very first time and and let other people um, listen to your guide, guidance and um, ideas, but also wisdom that you share with the whole world. So how about doing that in Poland? That is how I came about the idea of inviting you. So thank you. Yeah, and I want to start also by just thanking you because it's those who have made the devotional commitment to be in the career path of mental health that are the spiritual first responders, the therapeutic first responders, when, whenever there's a crisis, and this is a crisis mm. that we uh, haven't seen maybe in our lifetime. Yeah. So, yeah. or, or, or this, maybe you haven't seen it this close in your lifetime. Yeah. Right? yeah. So, yeah. 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 Thank you. Good for you. I'm proud of you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, just a short story before I jump into the, the, you know, the war zone situation, I came across your work in 2017 and I signed up for a miracle membership and I came across the meditation that is called All Is Well with Josh, that you did with Josh. And I just immediately fell in love. I was in Sweden uh, back then and I was trying to figure out my personal life and I came across this one. And this is the meditation that honestly helped me through all ups and downs in my life and also the 24th of February. So thank you. Wow. Oh, I got to go back and resurrect that one. That's a good yeah. one. You're right. It's a beautiful meditation. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. I'm so happy it served you. Yeah. That's, yeah. yeah. And I forward to everyone like, sign up, sign up, sign up. <laughs> you have, mm -hmm. and especially go to, um, I think it's April 2017 in the Miracle Neighborhood. Like, go there. Wow. <laughs> Look at you. You remember. The I'm doing my homework. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Well, we're, well, I have a promise to you, which is we're really elevating the platform. So it'll be on an app and it will be really easy to access. So, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So going back to the, to the, um, the reason I got the courage to invite you is that when there are millions of immigrants not, you know, trying to figure out their life from scratch, how can we support them? And also, how can spirituality support them and us in helping them? Beautiful question. Well, I think whether you're a first responder, literally in Poland, welcoming people into your country and in many cases into your home, or you're some you know, millions and millions of miles away, we all have a pull to show, not we all, but many of us have a pull to show up, to do something, to be of service, to be a container for people to feel held. And I believe that when we have these moments of desire to show up, we can obviously get shut down when we think we have to do it all. But it's really the ripple effect of each individual's commitment to one another that allows us to create long-lasting extended change. Mm -hmm. So for myself, I can only speak for myself right now, but I'm not in Poland, but I'm in America wa watching what's happening in the world, just like everyone else. I got a message from a woman named Alexandra who lives in Kiev, a young woman. She messaged me a few days before the invasion and <clears throat> the war. And she was like, I need a prayer, reach out. And we've been communicating ever since. And so while I have felt extremely powerless all the way over here, and you guys have a lot more power to serve than I do, I made the commitment to be in the service of this one person, to employ her in ways that I can, to support her to to exhaust every option of helping her get out if and when she decides to leave she has a partner who she's staying with and to make that commitment to her mm -hmm. my grandmother was a holocaust survivor mm -hmm. and her ability to be out of be in switzerland at that time and her ability to then get to england and the people that helped her along the way are why i'm here mm -hmm. 
So my feeling is if I can help one life, then I have done my job. Yeah. And so being in Poland and witnessing a lot of lives coming through and wanting to show up, focus on the individual, focus on what you can, what you can do, because if you try to do it all, you'll get burnt out and overwhelmed, and then you're not going to be able to be a container to hold that. Mm -hmm. So, because, because you guys are going through this in your own way, right? You're right on the border of this horrific experience. You're witnessing people come through traumatized. You're collectively traumatized. So, you have to care for yourselves. So you may feel that guilt of like that survivor's guilt of like we have our home and our food and our what livelihood, although not to diminish in any, any of the ways that you've been affected as well, you know, with all of the all of the different issues that are happening around and the fear. But that survivor's guilt takes away your power to serve. Yeah. And so I would also say to keep continuously serving yourself so that you can be a healthy container to show up for others. For you specifically as a psychologist, I would say, I would really just get granular here and suggest doing any kind of online meetings or getting people to safely gather in the support of one another, sharing tools as you see I do mm -hmm. for people to help them regulate and reaching out exactly as you have to me and just having conversations like this. You're already doing it. Yeah. Yeah. You're, and you look so angelic. It's almost, <laughs> I mean, you're absolutely gorgeous, but there's this angelic presence. Like I feel that you know you're working with an angelic presence, mm -hmm. that it's not just you. There's a mm -hmm. spiritual presence working through you. Mm -hmm. And I felt that with my grandmother I'm saying, help this girl, help this young woman. And so just DMing with her about 10 minutes ago, you know, <laughs> this has been going on for three months, right? Mm -hmm. However long it's been. Mm -hmm. And it won't stop and it won't stop. And maybe one day she'll live in my town and I'll take care of her. I don't know. We'll see. That's my goal. Yeah. Thank you. For, thank you for appreciating that. And also thank you for sharing um, that even helping, even, you know, uh, air quotes, helping one person is, is also helpful because sometimes we fall into the trap that you either help like a thousand or you're not helpful at all. Right. A bad trap to fall into. Yeah. I mean, listen. There's ways to do both. You can make donations to organizations that you know are helping many, and at the same time, you can show up for that one individual. But for me, I think that the benefit, thinking about the fact that my grandmother was able to get to safety and be safe is why I'm here. Yeah. So there's a whole generation that will be alive as a result of the support you can help for one individual. Yeah, yeah. And there's, um, on the 24th of February, I woke up, I heard the news, and I thought immediately, like, okay, so what can I do sitting in a safe house, you know, in the in capital of Poland? And I thought, I have to write. And I have what you mentioned uh, uh, pretty often, like a, like a sort of, I was just writing down something that was coming from somewhere else. I was just, you know, jotting down and, and I posted on my social media. And the post more or less was all about, okay, so the, the, you know, the war is like happening right next to us. Uh, what do we have to do right now? Every person you see that you love, tell this person that you love her or him or they. When you're going to drive your car to the, you know, to your work, put on a music that you love and appreciate that you can listen to that music. Like this, the, the smallest um, thing that we can do. And I got appreciated a lot, but I also got a, um, criticized for that. Like people are dying there. Like what does it, what does it make a difference to listen to music that that you like? Like you know, you're too spiritual. You're too like airy. You're too like not grounded. Like listen, girl. And I thought, why again do we do that dichotomy? Like it's either or, it's 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 both. So yeah. how do you deal with you know that sort of um, um, criticism? I think it's acceptance. You know, not everyone, most of humankind, are not ready to make that shift. That's why there's war because of people that have unresolved wounds. So those of us who have those desires to lean into growth and inspiration and spiritual connection we can't expect some other we can't expect everybody to get on board mm -hmm. but those of us who have the willingness to do it that's on us mm -hmm. we have to raise the vibration and some you know if somebody said something to me the other day they said we're talking about a friend of mine who's struggling and i was trying to help them and he, she didn't want any help and she said to me that's her contract you have yours. And so just say, I understand, you know, if somebody's criticizing you, either just forgive and delete or just say very simply, 
um, I'm just I'm just sending prayers to you to feel to feel safe in whatever way you can. Yeah. Yeah. Because don't stop what you're doing. Don't dim your light. The moments of your grace really count. And I'll tell you why. Mm -hmm. When you are in that state of deep connection to your spiritual power and your spiritual presence, you have more energy. Mm -hmm. You have more intuition. You have a stronger sense of connection to the universe. You have more uh, physical well-being. Mm -hmm. And so in that state, you have more power to help others. Mm -hmm. Don't don't dim that light. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what are the practices that you would suggest or you would invite us all to do while still navigating through this darkness, but also probably more to come, uh, mm -hmm. wherever mm -hmm. we are? So what can we do to keep the light on? The same thing I've been saying to my friend Alexandra, who, Alexandra, who's living in Kiev right now. I, 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 it's really about building up your spiritual resilience. Mm -hmm. So right now she's in Kiev. She's in the middle of this war. She's she's with her partner. She has her dog, and she's meditating daily. She's practice. She's listening to EMDR music while she meditates. She's listening to the Miracle Membership. She's reading the books. She's deepening her prayer. She's actually doing some of the biggest, most profound personal growth work that I've ever seen anybody do in a crisis. Mm -hmm. And she's using the time to really get right within. Mm -hmm. I would always uh, really lean on the the heroes that came before us, Anne Frank, mm -hmm. right? If Anne could think her way out in the midst of hiding, mm -hmm. we can mm -hmm. in our world as well. And I'm not even going to speak for myself because I'm sitting here with all the privileges in the world, uh, and 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 still seeing people around me miserable, mm -hmm. right? So, doing whatever we can to create that spiritual resilience mm -hmm. that actually translates into physical resilience and physical definitely and strength to help others. Yeah, definitely because when. We people, other people around us are co regulating with our energy. Mm -hmm. And when you have the power energy, when you have the energy of light, when you have the energy of grace, it's actually m very important for you to be boundaried so you don't pick up the, the energy that's not that frequency, but also to be that presence in that scenario with the other. Mm -hmm. So I liken it to a child, to being with a baby, a little, little child your presence, or even my kittens, right? Mm -hmm. My presence can dictate the whole energy of the room. And so they're regulating off of my presence, but they're not taking anything from me. They're just receiving the benefit of my presence. Mm -hmm. And so don't ever underestimate that. Mm -hmm. And when we are surrounded with darkness, because now we talk about the war, but there are still like the regular things happening. People, you know, are, get sick, they die, they divorce, they they you know have to move, leave their houses. Not only Ukraine, but all around the world. Maybe it's a it's a big question, but how to not lose hope in humanity, in in the goodness in the world? Because it's easy to do it. Like like there's mm -hmm. so many things happening around the world that mm -hmm. think oh, we're just you know moving downwards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We can't lose hope in humanity. That's what, we, that's what we've got. Hope is what we've got. We can also not override the reality of what's happening around us and pretend like it's, we can't spiritually whitewash it, right? Like, oh, that didn't happen. So it's about taking in and processing the information and the experiences and using whatever work we can, whether it be trauma-based therapeutic practices or breath work or body-based work or physical movement is very valuable at this time. Even if you're stuck in an apartment, just physically moving, yoga, stretching, moving, because you don't want to get that energy stuck in you. Mm -hmm. But the hope, the hope has to remain because without that hope, then we, then we succumb to that depth of darkness. So we must, for our own well-being and for the well-being of the world, maintain that hope. And the way to stay connected to hope is to, 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 to redirect your vision, your view. So do you choose to view the 
darkness or are you going to view the light in the situation? So the scenarios where you witness people helping one another, you witness the survival, when you witness the um the 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 opportunities, the the caring. When 9-11 happened in the United States, I walked around with this one there's two lenses I could have walked the streets with. The fear lens, which was there, of course, but I worked through it and continued to daily. But this lens of just witnessing humanity and its greatness, right? Witnessing people who never would have communicated before, communicating people, witnessing cab drivers pick homeless people up off the street and drive them uptown, witnessing just carrying people around. I lived in downtown Manhattan. So just seeing that uh, true humanity mm -hmm. and to do your part to stay in that vision forever, not just for a period of time. Mm -hmm. This is very valuable. Yeah. And, and I think it's sort of um, a choice that we can make every time we see something difficult happening. I was driving down um, uh, downtown today and, um, and I, was, I stopped at the traffic light and the lady behind me started honking because I wasn't you know, fast enough to move when the green lights went on. And my first reaction was like, geez, like, like, why? And then I thought, how about let's make up a story about her? Maybe she's rushing to get her baby out of the nursery because they call mm -hmm. that something is wrong. And it sort of like shifted my energy, like compassion. Okay, I'll speed up. If she's in hurry, then I'll speed up. And it's all about the, the, the second that I make that choice. That's exactly. I mean, you're just you're extraordinary. I adore you. I can't <laughs> wait to be friends with you. I hope to visit you in person. <laughs> uh, it, that's exactly right. It's recognizing that we're all suffering. Even the p worst people in the world are suffering, and they're suffering most. Mm -hmm. The suffering is is a collective experience, mm -hmm. and when we witness people, what I often do is if I'm around someone who is having a bad attitude, I just double down with kindness. Yes. Just like you are, you look beautiful today, you know, and I mean it. I'm not bullshitting them, but I really. I double down with kindness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I go. Because what do they need then? You know, they need you it, even more than the the, the happy ones. <laughs> right. Um, I was. I, I admire your relationship, if I may say so, with Wayne Dyer and everything you know he did in our lives and and in your life. And there's this one sentence that I go back to, like every time darkness, you know, is creeping into my life, that he said something like. It's when you change the way you look at things, things around you change. And I think this is sort of a solution or a tool that we can apply every single day, every single day. Yeah. Um, yeah. How do you apply it? Oh, well, I always use uh, what are the, the eight C's. So I, in internal family systems therapy, which you might be familiar with, we lean into how can I see this with curiosity and courage, mm -hmm. compassion, connectedness, creativity, calmness, mm -hmm. and, and giving ourselves curiosity, if I left that one out, courage, right? So just really give ourselves the shift of, I want to see it through the lens of that negativity. How can I lean into those C qualities? Mm -hmm. Those C qualities are our higher self. That's who mm -hmm. we really are. That's the mm -hmm. truth of who we are. Mm -hmm. And I also reach out for the help, not only living beauties like you right now, but also um, the the spiritual guide. And actually, uh, one of the meditations I did um, uh, from your toolbox, I discovered the name of my guardian angel. And I was so moved by the name that I even tattooed it over here so that I, I don't know if you can see it. What's now. the name? It's Nana. Beautiful. And there are some... Yeah. Wings around the name. Wing. That's yeah. beautiful. I love what you did. That's stunning. <laughs> so that I, I will that. never ever forget it. That I'm always there's always some someone behind me. Like, like even if if I fall into the trap of you know being down to the earth, thinking, oh my God, I'm all alone. I'm never alone. But I do struggle with. Um, I, now I've said it out loud, so everybody knows it. But uh, I also work with in the business settings, in the business contacts, and it's sort of. That part of me that I show rarely, because as you said in, to my previous questions, n not everybody is ready for that. However, I want to ask you, because you've got extensive experience in that, is there any way I can sort of invite people to reconnect to their guardian angels if they do not believe in it? 
I would really help them connect to their intuition mm -hmm. and inspiration. As Wayne Dyer would say, in spirit is inspired. Mm -hmm. So if your language is such that you recommend these practices for connecting to that intuitive inner voice, mm -hmm. inner guidance system, intuitive inspired nature, then they can get behind that. Mm -hmm. The second that you say something about angels, they're going to check out and then you can't do your job. Mm -hmm. So you have to really do your part to just, in whatever way you can, just uh, expand the language, expand the lexicon. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And what what do you do when you get anxious or scared or afraid? How do hmm. you help yourself? I have a lot of practices. I do a heart hold. I place my hand on my heart and my other hand on my belly, and I just breathe deeply, deep belly breath, inhale on the on the diaphragm, and then on the exhale, I let that relax. Mm -hmm. I drop my tongue. I relax my tongue. Yeah. And that just starts to relax my jaw and my whole nervous system settles. I move physically. I get curious about what's coming up. Mm -hmm. I ask myself, what do you need? Mm -hmm. How are you doing? Mm -hmm. But but fear is only one of the plenty of emotions that we experience. The other one is is, is ang being angry, anger. And I love what you write about in, in your latest book about the rage on the page thing. Um, and I, I don't know what it's like in the U.S., but in the Polish setting, um, and going back to my generation and the, and the, the, the former ones, or our parents' ones, females especially we're not very encouraged to to get angry we're supposed to be nice and happy and and shy in the corner waiting for somebody to ask us to the front or to the center and especially with the catholic background it's sort of that supports that um vision so i think culturally polish women are getting um reconnected with their anger but not in a negative way but as sort of integrating it back beautiful um, Excellent. Because I do think we need it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I would recommend that practice to your patients for mm -hmm. sure. Because, uh, but they may be so afraid to rage mm -hmm. that you may need to even use different language, like, you know, thoughts on the page or something like get out whatever it is that you need to get out. Do it freely, do it effortlessly. Because if, if you don't have a safe place to release it, mm -hmm audibly or you know just speaking speaking truth get it out onto the page and what i love about that also is listening to that binaural music which i can give you to share with people it's on my spotify and that will help re reprocess those emotional disturbances while you're in that mm -hmm. practice of journaling mm -hmm. and from the spiritual point of view what is the benefit of integrating anger into our everyday life because some people think that anger is on the dark side i don't agree but whatever we don't let out stays stuck within so we will if we keep, hold on to that anger it's going to show up in our back pain mm -hmm. and our migraines and our sleep issues it's just going to keep showing up mm -hmm. it keeps yeah. showing up yeah. and following up on women um in uh, when the refugees are coming into poland most of them are women and children and i thought immediately of how about if i step back and look look at the the wave of femininity moving into our country, the Slavic wave, there's something, there's a reason for it, I think. So I'm not wow. sure what the answer is there, but uh, any ideas? Wow. Wow. Well, I'm just going to follow what your intuition is, and that's stunning, this, this beautiful wave of feminine coming through. Mm -hmm. How powerful is mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. Wow. I... Uh, I think that it's a beautiful image just for me to hold. And I think that you'll be the first to know mm -hmm. what that's for mm -hmm. and be in the support of it. Mm -hmm. Ho hopefully, um, embracing this, the, the, the power that it brings into our country because it's all about, I think, sisterhood and trying to reconnect to women because we were, for ages, we were like, not really encouraged to do that. Um, but now I think we're sort of reconnecting to the idea of being friends to one another and not the the foes. So I think yes. there's something in it. Yeah. Well, in times of crisis, that's often when we start to connect to mm -hmm. those who we never otherwise would connect to. A lot of the pretenses dissolve and the boundaries dissolve. The unified desire to to heal comes 
as a stronger resonance between people than when we're just walking around and everything seems fine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I think I was um, on the 24th of, of February, I was giving a talk online um, and I was supposed to do, you know, something, but then obviously it all shifted. And I think it was one of those experiences when I, when I saw they were, they, they, they there were like hundred people on it and all cameras were on and sort of like you felt the connection in the time of crisis. We, we so wanted to be together that it was one of the, and it was a business context. And I, and I thought, wow, in the, in the, in those challenging moments the masks just just fall off and off yes that's exactly right and when we have these openings for that we have to jump in and just show up yeah i think that's exactly right yeah and going back to your beautiful books, which of the books, by the way, we have not all of them yet, but we have um, uh, your books in Poland um, and I do like, like giveaways, like send to everybody, <laughs> try to figure out like the gifts, like read that one. My favorite one is the universe has your back, obviously, because, you know, it, I don't know, obviously, I said obviously, but I know what. <laughs> obviously. I think that's but, most people's favorite for yeah. sure. Yeah. I don't yeah. know why. Um, but which of the books would you recommend as the ones to reach out in the times of darkness? Right now, I think the universe has your back would be really valuable for people. But I also think because it's the, it's about transforming fear into faith. But if someone's really willing to do some deeper work and start to feel relief and mm -hmm. needs to face some trauma, which is most people, but not everybody's ready for it. But if they are ready for it, I would say read Happy Days. And I don't know, I believe it's definitely going to be translated in Polish if it hasn't already. Mm -hmm. not, not yet. Not yet. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's coming. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. coming. So I would definitely read Happy Days or listen to the audio book if mm -hmm. someone's maybe um, not fluent in English, but they can understand it, then listen to the audio book. Yeah. And yeah. And I, <laughs> I, I even sort of try to recap the, the, the whole theme from the book so that it helps because it's a beautiful story of you integrating actually the, yeah. the bits and pieces that were, you know, yeah. darkness for quite a while. So Totally. Yeah, it's, it's, that's so cool that you did that. I know. Well, I'm you know trying <laughs> my best uh, for as long as it not it is not translated into Polish. But once it, it will be there will be another book that I will send out like to everybody like like do that because there's there's as you said the trauma is sort of like everywhere the big T the small T yeah it just it's yeah. big it's everywhere it's time people are ready mm -hmm. and these conversations have a lot of resonance for many, many more people than otherwise that would have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I do have one question from our viewers and it, it goes like this. How should we talk to immigrants in crisis when we often don't have any answers or words that can give them much hope? The eight C's, mm. compassion, curiosity, calmness, connectedness, creativity, courage, and there's another one that I'm leaving out. <laughs> <laughs> but being in that curiosity and that compassion towards and the courage mm -hmm. is your and yourself with a capital S. Mm -hmm. So when you meet anyone from that place, they, that will have a helpful resonance for them. That yeah. will support them. Yeah. And again, I think we fall into the trap of having the right words. Um, it's not what we say, it's how we show up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and your presence is your power. Yeah, exactly. Not, not having. Uh, I think Brenda Brown b b says something about that empathy. Sometimes is all about just being with that person and having That's right. all the answers to that. Yeah. Oh, there's this AT. They say compassion, clarity, connectedness, creativity, courage, confidence, and calm. Clarity is what I was leaving out. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> okay, we're almost running out of time. So, if there's anything you feel like you want to share with with our viewers, Polish women, yeah. Ukrainian women? I really do. I want to, to speak to the Polish people and say, on behalf of all of us watching from around the world, not able to be a presence, a physical presence, not being able to feed a meal, not being able to bring someone into our home, I am so grateful to know that there are open hearts and open arms. It's making me very emotional to do that work on behalf of those who, of us who can't physically get there or do that. Mm -hmm. And to be really proud of the way that you're showing up. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. Thank you. And thank you for, um, for helping us so that we can help others because I think it's a sort of like a, um, like a ripple gypsy. effect. Yeah. Yeah. Ripple like effect. Ripple. Like, yeah. Yeah. It, it all matters. Like no matter how big or small the, the help is, even, even the, the, even maybe <laughs> it's not the right word, but meditation and, and prayer, whatever we do will help just direct it at the people that need help. Absolutely. Yeah. So Absolutely. Don't underestimate it. For all the work that you do, because we feel supported by your work so that we can help others. So thank you. Thank you. Bless you, Mama. Bless you. You're doing such a beautiful <laughs> job. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And hopefully um, see you something somehow, maybe in 3D so that we, we can hug. Uh, yeah. And if you have the recording of this, I would love to share it out. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, maybe thank you to put it, Maybe we broadcast it on my podcast and give people this conversation. Perfect. It's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so You're much. So yeah. <laughs> Likewise. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Bye, sweetheart. Bye-bye.